Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Elihu Hill coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. I want to talk to y'all about the relationship between whites and blacks. The relationship between whites and blacks, all right? Again, I'm not talking about no immigrant blacks, but strictly the descendants of slaves who have a birthright here. You understand? Who have a claim to this land by way of birthright, heritage, ancestry okay labor all right blood that have soaked into this land okay and that relationship between whites and blacks is what we would call is what a psychologist would call a dysfunctional relationship okay it is unhealthy all right, and I'm going to make some comparative analysis on the relationship between us and white folk. First comparative analysis. Give you the example of the abused wife. Okay, the abused wife. All right. Even though the husband Okay, goes upside her motherfucking head at the slightest goddamn, you know, smallest motherfucking incident, you know, because he's been allowed to do this, and, and, and this has gone for so long, unchecked, without no accountability, without no consequence, without no repercussion. So now, going upside her head is the norm. Whenever he feels the need to shut her up, whenever he wants her out of his face, whenever he's being questioned on his attitude and behaviors, all right, he does not ever, ever feel the need to listen or give ear or thought, nor empathy to any of her opinions. All right? Respect is loss. Okay? She's now been reduced to whatever he feel her, her, her poor, her, her, her low esteem and worth contributes in his life the cooking the cleaning the children anything outside of that perimeter he don't give a fuck about her okay white people I told you will always need a free and cheap source of labor all right and this was your role here in America it was your motherfucking role that got you here. It has been the motherfucking role that has kept you here. Okay? When you step outside of that perimeter that I described, and you start wanting to take on other motherfucking roles besides the role that has been prescribed for you, upside your motherfucking head. Get the fuck back in your place, nigga. Okay? And no matter how many times the husband goes upside her motherfucking head, she won't leave. She forgives. She wants to believe so much in her heart that somewhere inside this motherfucking animal Lies a beating heart. What I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, the cracker just like that husband, his heart is cold. It's hard. It's no longer a beating heart. It's just a tumor. It's just a 
a, 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 a dead form of its former self. It's a cancer. It's toxic. Poisonous. Fatal. But again, we want to believe so much into this white man. We want to believe so bad in our hearts that somewhere inside these motherfuckers lies some good. And that if we could just say the right words to him, if we could just get him to understand, get us to see us as human beings, that somewhere, Somehow, some way, we can get them to show us some empathy. We can get them to have some remorse for the things he's done to us in the past. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you right now the definition of a sociopath. A sociopath is a motherfucker who lacks empathy who lacks remorse, okay, who doesn't feel guilt. He is devoid of understanding. He seeks and gets pleasure out of inflicting suffering. And when a person cries and screams to the sociopath, it's like classical Music. It's an opera being played in his mind. And to cry and to scream only pushes the sociopath to inflict more suffering. Because it is through the suffering that he receives his pleasure. You hear that shit? Now, a lot of you motherfuckers, man, have really disappointed me, man. A lot of y'all. A lot of y'all disappointed me. And I'm not talking to the brothers and the sisters, the righteous, the ones who try to have integrity in their life. And integrity is simply doing the right thing for the right reasons. I'm going to repeat that motherfucker right there. Integrity is doing the right thing. For the right reasons. For example. Posting. Memes. Of half naked black women. No matter how beautiful they look. It is not prescribed for you right now. The evidence is in the comments. That the brothers. Make. Damn. Shit. I'll marry her. Motherfucker, you don't even know her. She's just a goddamn post. You haven't talked to her. You know what I mean? You haven't engaged her thoughts, her feelings, ambitions. So all you're doing is catering to their lower desires. All you're doing is catering to their lower self. And the word self is flesh spelt backwards. So I try to, I try to uh, plead with the brothers and sisters who make these kind of posts. I say, brother or sister, I understand where you're coming from about the beauty of black people. But this is not what's needed right now. They motherfucking killing us right now. And mentally, these brothers' minds are in an unhealthy state. These type of posts and memes are just a distraction right now. Until we can begin to feel solidified as a group and as a nation. This to them is nothing but a form of soft porn. In the comments that they make validates my statements. They all comments. 
coming from the lower self, the lower flesh, the body of desires. But my appeal to these people, get shot the fuck down. And then the brothers try to justify their comments with bullshit. Black people love slick sounding bullshit. Shit that don't even make no kind of fucking sense. That's total redundancy. It is what it is. The dumbest motherfucking statement ever fucking that came out the mouth of black people. It is what it is. Total bullshit. A redundant statement cancels itself out. You understand? The it is never described or, or given any type of uh, 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 it's not a definitive noun. It. It has no significance. You're not signifying what the it is. It is what it is. Total bullshit. So the brothers come out and they, they talking that, uh, oh, I'm a man and, uh, this, that, and other. Motherfucker, you ain't no goddamn man. You just, you just, uh, you just, uh, 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 let me get this shit right. You just a horny dog ass nigga. That's all the fuck you is. Because when I appeal to you to join and starting to have some accountability on this motherfucking cracker, so we can remove the motherfucking pride out of killing black people. You come up with it. Then you want to fucking trivialize and come up with all kinds of motherfucking excuses. Why as to not you shouldn't fight. You come up with more slick sound and logic. You know. See so you trivialize that shit. Then you trivialize why the fuck. Uh, you in support of posting motherfucking half new black women what I consider to be soft motherfucking porn because the mind ain't in the right state to appreciate the beauty and the art properly you say that shit but your comments contradict the shit your comments is coming from a perspective like I said of a dog ass nigga You don't hear me though. And the other thing, I got more support. I get more support from the sisters, man, than the brothers. See, so sisters do want and will support a strong brother. Believe that shit. But I'm a threat, it seems like, to you brothers who think you strong. No. Who think you strong. But you really not. You not. Fighting back these motherfuckers ain't even an option. It ain't even nothing to even fucking talk about for real. It should be a, 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 a fucking uh, uh, immediate swift response. You understand that shit? Revenge is something that should be swift, immediate. Motherfucker disrespect you or something, you supposed to get back at us as ASAP Rocky. Quick, fast, in a hurry. That's how you stop shit. That's what's called attitude adjustment. That's how you get motherfucking respect. Not the ma, not 48 hours, not 72 hours. You supposed to get right back at these motherfuckers ASAP. Now I know I'm from the streets. I know I'm from penitentiaries and all that shit. I spent 10 years of my life. I'm 45, a quarter of my life in motherfucking prison. I know I'm not cheap niggas. But it's cool though. But I'm still a man. I'm a thinking man. I ain't no slouch. Believe that shit. And I'm sure that 
whether you like me or not. If you see any of my work, you bear witness, nigga. You bear witness. <laughs> you ain't got to say it or admit it. I've been told who the fuck and what I am all my life. <laughs> By white folk, too. That nigga smart. They come and shake my motherfucking hand on hearing me speak the truth about their ass. I've had just as much validation from white folk as black. And I'm talking about checking their ass. And they'll come up and say, you know, Brother Eli, I have to tell you, you know, everything you're saying is right. You know what I'm saying? That's a goddamn, I don't even, you know, but, fuck that shit, man. Shit's crazy. So now I'm back to the relationship between whites and blacks, man. And that was my second point. Revenge. The swiftness of revenge. The swiftness of accountability. You understand? Because Understanding needs to be gotten first between the, the in the relationship. When you have a dysfunctional or abusive relationship, it's because understanding is not present between the two parties. There is no mutuality. There is no eye to eye ness. Okay. There must be a removal of the pedestals. You understand? The delay. The delay of dealing with these issues between us and them only makes the matter worse. Because when you allow someone to do these things to you without disruption, they become bolder. And usually the abuse begins to happen more frequent. It don't fucking slow down. It don't fucking stop. And with a sociopath, talks do not work. You have to speak in the same language of the sociopath, believe it or not, in order to wipe it out. Because it does not deal in the logic of things. It doesn't speak that language. It doesn't understand that language. Logic, reason, come, let us reason together as the Bible says. It does not, it does not recognize that shit, y'all. And I told you this shit before, man. These people... For the last fucking 6,000 years. Have dealt with the world by force. Not democratic. Not democracy. You understand that shit? Not negotiation and talks. By force. It is their language. And when you meet their force with force, they back the fuck off. Unless it's really, unless you really have something they want real bad. Okay? Now, here's the good part. It's not the goddamn thing that we have that they want bad. Other than a few, what, gentrification properties? You know? That Black people might be sitting on uh, ghetto land that they now might want to, you know, develop or some shit. But, you know, other than that, man, there's nothing that the fuck we got that they want. In fact, it's even safe to say that the only thing they want right now is to get rid of us. Our goddamn role has been, uh, you know, they've decided that we don't need the blacks anymore. They aren't, they aren't, you know, 
They aren't beneficial to us. We have no need for them. We have uh, a new wave of people coming in who are more well-behaved, who are more, you know, able to adapt to our way of life, who are playing, who are willing, and seem to be more naturally groomed to fit the role that we need them to fit. They're quiet Hispanics. The women don't hardly say shit. You know, they just smile and giggle at white folk. Like niggas did back in slavery days. But don't say much. They don't say shit. And when given a motherfucking command, they nod their head, then they go do it. They don't ask questions. And any question that they ask is just to make sure they understand the motherfucking command right. That's it. So now your role has become obsolete. That's why they use terms like useless eaters. Thugs. They used to say shit back in slavery. Nigga, you breathing the white man's good air. That kind of shit. So your role is obsolete. They have no need for you. Your worth is nothing to them. They will only keep a few of you around for entertainment purposes. For remedial jobs that nobody fucking want. Shit shovelers, <laughs> basically. Service work, Walmart, McDonald's, Burger King. Hmm. Underground work, mine work. The shit that kills motherfuckers, pouring steel. The shit that gives motherfuckers black lung, mesothelioma, all that shit. Shit that killed my granddaddy. Who worked at Bethlehem Steel here in Baltimore for 30 years and never missed a day's work. My appeal to the black people of America. It just falls on deaf ears. But I don't need your validation to know that I'm right. I don't even need to know that I'm right. This, these words and things and the conviction that's been placed on my heart. It's been placed there by a conscious intelligent force greater than myself, whom some men call God, whom I call a law. But I'm getting weary. This is a hard rolling job. The rolling job of a messenger. The angel of the Lord. Son of man. Angel just means messenger. Malak. Hebrew Malak. Messenger. I try to stay true to the conviction. I try to stay true to the covenant that I made with God. See, most of y'all don't know, along with being in prisons, I've been in every motherfucking psych ward in the state of Maryland. I've been strapped down. I've been beaten, worked over, shot up with all kinds of fucking God knows what. I've been driven through underground motherfucking buildings. Put on elevators. And the next thing you know, I'm in a fucking delusional state. Been given something of God knows what. Sitting across the table from some fucking cracker. 3.30, 4 in the morning in a dark ass room 
with no lights and hardly any mo with no motion and hardly any lighting being asked a fucking bunch of questions. I don't know what the fuck they done did to me. I ain't gonna lie. I don't. But it was in those same motherfucking psych wards that I promised them and pleaded to God, please get me out of here. I promise you. Because all, listen man, all my motherfucking adult life have been tugging and pulling on me. Nigga, I need you to do this. Smacking me upside the head, snapping his finger. Hey, you. Hey, motherfucker, you. I need you over here. Until I finally listen. Because God has a way of getting your motherfucking attention. He will tap you on the shoulder the first time. Snap his finger the second time. Then slap you upside your motherfucking head the third. And these all come in the form of motherfucking circumstances in your life. First time, you may take some type of loss. And the loss seems to uh, get your attention. You see the mistake. You understand what the fuck you did wrong and what you should have been doing. As opposed to what the fuck you did do. And that if you'd have done what the fuck you should have been doing. What happened to you wouldn't have happened. And when that thing you should have been doing. Was something of integrity. Something righteous. Remember. Something that was doing the right thing for the right reason. But instead. You took it upon yourself. You took it upon your flesh self to do the opposite. And therefore, you was hit with the consequence of repercussion. So then again, it happens a second time. And then by the third time, the motherfucking consequence of repercussion is hard. Oftentimes, it's more than you can fucking bear. And it is at those times. That you brought to your motherfucking knees and tears. Begging. Crying. Pleading. Calling out. What Yahshua called out. Eli, Eli. My God, my God. Give me a little respect, people, please. Work with me. Help me. I'm not your enemy. I know I'm harsh. But I'm not no harsher than these motherfuckers are on you. You fight me back. Fight them. This is Brother United.